Okay, hi everyone. We're a couple of minutes away from starting. So um, the next person that we're going to hear from is going to be Will Leet, who is going to talk about a career in NPD. So I'm just going to bring him to stage in readiness and um, we'll get going. Thank you so much, all of you, for um, commenting away in the chat and asking your questions. Um, yeah, as always, just, just pop questions in the chat and we can go through it with uh, the speaker once they're um, logged in and joined and then also um, if you have if you want to react to anything you can post emojis at the bottom there which I think is really fun. Hi Will. Hi you alright? You alright yeah can you hear me okay you can see me okay? Yeah good thank you. Brilliant how are you doing you okay? Yeah I'm good thank you. Great okay so um, we're just a minute away from starting but I think um, we may as well go ahead so do you want to just introduce yourself and then launch a little bit into why NPD? Okay yep yeah. so hi everyone so uh, most of you probably won't know me um, so yeah my name as I said before is uh, Will Woolley so um, I started pretty much off where most of you are sitting now uh, so as part of the ABST, um, I came and I entered the uh, competitions. Uh, I ended up winning um, the President's Cup two times in a row. Um, I did want to go for the third year in the row so I could win it sort of three times and hopefully they'd let me keep the cup. But sadly, I couldn't make it to the uh, third one um, because I'd been offered a job in Norway. Um, so that's sort of where my story took me. So it was after meeting David Smart at the ABST and sort of making contacts and links with him. Uh, he managed to sort of get me a job over in Norway where I spent two years of my uh, baking career, sort of honing my craft over there and learning all my craft baking skills, um, as well as taking on a supervisory role and learning how to sort of quite good leadership skills within the craft bakery over there. Um, before that, while I was at University College Birmingham, uh, David Smart, once again, he also got me a job, um, a summer internship over in Holland at Trump Bakery. So I was working in the test bakery over there, uh, working on a lot of laminated doughs through their sort of um, production lines and sort of doing a lot of test bakery on their lines over there for them, which was sort of very interesting and sort of helped me with my career in the future also. Um, so yeah, so once I come back from Norway, I actually came back into the pandemic last year when it all started. So, but luckily I didn't struggle to get a job. Uh, I managed to move into one quite quickly where I went into sort of manufacturing. Um, so I was actually sort of going for manufacturing for the first time. So I was learning all about um, the production lines and how they work uh, and the bakery sort of side of things onto that side. Cause it's a lot different moving over from craft so I did that for about, just coming up to about a year or so um, before I was approached by David Wood Bacon. Um, and that was sort of really thanks to uh, Sarah Rorton as well. I know it's online because she sort of recommended me for the job. So uh, thank you, Sarah, for that, because I've enjoyed it ever since now starting my job here. Um, I reckon so Sarah's had a part to play in most of our careers, really. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah. Um, so yeah, so now, um, so day to day sort of, uh, running for me now is, um, we've got all, we, we work with sort of all the large UK supermarkets, coffee shop chains and sandwich manufacturers uh, sort of amongst other customers. Um, we'll get a brief come in, we'll sort of sit down as a team, the sort of the, the MPD technologist side of things and as, as the MPD bakeries. Um, we'll discuss the project over, discuss what we're going to make, sort of um, go through sort of um, product sizes, product weights, everything like that, flavours, um, see where we need to go, um, get in contact with any ingredient suppliers we need to, to talk through to them, to see what they can offer us to help us make this product and create it, uh, go through sort of all the ingredient functionalities so we know exactly what we're doing, what's going to create this product. Um, we'll then sort of go into the test bakery, we'll create this product, um, make it sort of best possible one we can before sending it off to the customer. They, they'll look at it, we'll have a meeting with them, discuss if they like it, if they don't like it, if they want to make any changes, which is mostly always the case. They always sort of want to make a few changes, want it cheaper, um, but also just want the best quality sort of thing still. 
Um, we'll, so we'll take that back. We'll keep making it again. Um, we'll go through then with our technical team um, to make sure everything's visible. We'll have like a visibility meeting to make sure everything can run down the line. Everything's sort of going smoothly, um, things like that. Um, before then, we'll take it on to the next stage um, where we'll take it down for factory trials. So part of my job as well is to sort of launch the product onto factory trials. So we'll get the line set up, bring in any new equipment that we need to um, start looking at any sort of any new ingredients and sort of go through sort of everything like that, training any staff that need training up onto a new product. Um, we'll start running the trials then until we get it exactly right and how we want it. We'll bring the customer in then to look at the uh, product again in the factory. They'll, they'll look over it all um, until they're dead happy. Um, and then we'll go on to sort of running further trials, sort of transport trials. Uh, the technologists will take over and start using packaging um, and things like that, where they'll sort of create um, sort of, we're going sort of more recyclable film and more recyclable packaging now. So that's what we're switching over to. So we're currently sort of, we've switched over from about 50% of our packaging now. So we've got about a of 50% to go, but sort of that's the future and that's sort of the line we're going to down that route. I think that's on the agenda, isn't it, for most large supermarkets? And um, I heard, you know, through my day job that um, Tesco's, you know, they were predicting um, the, the tax implications of not switching to a recyclable packaging on uh, most products would cost them around 200 to 300 million pounds. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously that's only their estimate, but that is an extortionate amount of money. So it's yeah. really in everyone's best interest if we switch, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's um, and sort of supermarkets are sort of pulling away from more people who are not switching. So sort of more the bakery manufacturers that are not switching to sort of more sustainable sort of ingredients and to sort of more recyclable and sustainable packaging are sort of pulling away from them as well. So it's sort of um, sort of give and take really. You've got to sort of, you've got to go move with the times and you've got to change, which will sort of work out better anyway for our uh, sort of planet and so for our food sustainability. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's so important um, that we stay, you know, ahead of the trend uh, in NPD, especially from, you know, the, the financial implications, but also the corporate social responsibility that we have. You know, um, this issue, if it gets worse, it's going to impact us all really badly in the future. So it's in everyone's best interest to put our best foot forward and, and move uh, to more recycled packaging. And there's so many innovations coming out, you know, these days for um, for packaging. It's just it's created this real movement, hasn't it? I don't know if you've seen the same, you know, from your end. Yeah, definitely. Sort of um, sort of working hard on it to try and sort of get it changed um, as much as possible. When sort of we everyone wants to do the bit sort of thing for the planet now, which is sort of very understandable. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, so as here at David Wood Baking anyway, so moving on a little bit more. Um, so we specialize sort of in, in craft breads, but from a manufacturing point of view. Um, so we do a lot of chia batters, paninis, focaccias. Um, we do a lot of craft breads such as sourdough, loaves. Um, we do lots of different flavors of sourdoughs that we're working on at the minute. Um, so yeah, so one of the biggest projects I've been working on is sort of on the last three three months I've been sort of working on a craft bread project for a large supermarket um, where we've just been sort of honing sort of my sourdough skills as much as possible. You think you know quite a lot, um, but then when it comes around to it, um, you don't actually know as much as you would like to, and they're sort of constantly learning sort of more and more and more um, of what you can do, uh, especially sort of in a manufacturing environment trying to produce sort of like 20,000 sourdough loaves sort of a week or and maybe sort of the customer now even wants more so it's sort of coming across the complications and adding new processes and developing processes and changing them all around as well which is sort of a really been really challenging but really exciting um, at the time. I don't know if you feel the same Will but I always find that you know a career in NPD is very humbling because you always think you know what you're talking about and it comes to it and nine times out of ten you really don't know what you're talking about you have to go back and do loads of research loads of development and and you find that you really become an expert on quite a lot of different areas 
Yeah, that's exactly the case. It's sort of a, a continuous learning job. Um, no matter what you think you know, you don't sort of thing. And there's always something new you can learn. You sort of one process will work one place, one place won't, one process won't work in another place. Um, we've got about 10 sites. Well, we've just got 10 sites now. So we've opened up our 10th site across the UK. And you've got to look at sort of the different weather sort of thing in these different areas sort of thing, because we could be producing up in the north sort of thing in the Lake District, but then we're producing also in the south. Um, so the weather completely different. Um, so it completely sort of changes the sort of the temperature for inside the factory and everything like that. So it's sort of many processes you've got to look at. Um, and it's sort of constantly sort of learning and sort of moving on and sort of adapting and sort of evolutionizing with the sort of products and everything like that. Yeah, definitely. It, you know, it's it's always learning. Someone that I worked with recently in NPD he once just said to me, "You're only the expert until someone else knows more than you." So, you know, you're you're only the go-to person in the room because everyone else knows a bit less on that subject. But the minute that someone knows more, you got to step back and let them teach you. You know, it's it's um, that's what I mean when I say it's quite humbling because your ego is quite often getting a bit of a smack back down to reality, isn't it? <laughs> yeah yeah definitely especially where especially because it's such a competitive business as well so sort of there's sort of many bakery businesses manufacturers and we're all competing for the same business um so if you don't win it sometimes um but then you might know the person the other sort of the mpd baker at another factory who's who sort of just won the business you've got to sort of not get too hurt by it you've got to, got to pick yourself up sort of move on and start sort of working hard and striving towards and sort of teaching yourself new things and getting ready for sort of the next product um, and the next project and just sort of learning as many sort of ingredients and bringing in more ingredients from sort of the ingredient suppliers, which sort of a key to our job as well. Um, sort of bringing in them new sort of new ingredients, sort of what they can do to the product, make them softer, make them harder sort of thing, open them up a bit more um, and give them more, a bit more flavor, which is sort of what everyone's looking at at the moment. I think um, that is, you know, something that to me has always been really apparent about the ABST is it's actually, you know, like you're saying, you might know the person that gets that business and, you know, most likely you've met them through college or through uni or through the ABST. And really, I think, you know, for an industry where we're, we're so tight knit, there's not a lot of opportunities to actually meet those who are in your study group um, at the different colleges. And, and if you kind of make moves to socialize with them at things like ABST you you kind of start on the right foot don't you you're not enemies you're actually just competing together um you know it can take that competitive edge just just yeah I think so and I think that's what drives you to sort of go that bit more and sort of go that and uh, go that bit further you sort of never fall out and you you're, you're still behind the scenes and even though they're working from competitor you still share little bits and little bobs um, and I'll sort of try and share as much as I can now with sort of the students, everyone coming through um, just sort of because of the opportunities that I was given when I was a sort of student there. I got given the chances to go abroad and go and study um, and go and work in different places and, and sort of just go and do test bakery and MPD and sort of everything like that. So sort of what I want to do sort of now, I want to start sort of helping out sort of the young students. So. If anyone has any questions, they can come to me. Also, um, we're giving um, the experience now for um, a few of the students from UCB because we're based in Dudley. So it's not too far for them to uh, come and do some uh, internship with us over the summer where they'll be coming for two to three weeks. Um, I know That's David. An opportunity for, for students because I really do think, you know, um, the most important thing while you're a student is just put yourself out there as much as you can you know make make your name for yourself as much as you can before you have real responsibilities you know yeah that's exactly right and sort of david smart sort of did help me along the way right at the sort of early in the beginning of my career um and sort of he sent over more sort of students over to norway for this summer um and i sort of got involved a little bit in that and sort of gave a question and answer um session to the students just to sort of ease their mind and everything before going over there Sort of any questions from sort of money to a sort of bake in there and everything like that so that sort of helps put their mind at ease and sort of i really enjoyed doing it because sort of i had a really good experience from being there too 
And how how did you find you know the bakery culture in Norway versus in the UK? Was it a big difference to you, or were there similarities? Do you think? Very much similarities. Um, they eat a lot more sort of rye and sort of dark, uh, darker bread sort of thing, sort of like like the rye, like I said, mentioned. Um, but and then they also sort of eat a lot of uh, sweet breads and sort of like brioche style, what they call bola. But obviously, sort of Nordic baking is becoming sort of very popular recently. Um, the last year or two in the UK and sort of you can go to many bakeries now in the UK and they're all selling sort of Nordic bakes and things like that and the Nordic bakery is sort of setting up quite a lot over the place so I think it's sort of becoming quite big over here what they were producing there um, which sort of helps me a bit as well because sort of we can start producing some of that and turning that round into the factory and sort of sort of start producing some uh, nice Nordic bakery goods. Definitely. It's really trendy at the minute, isn't it? You know, kind of um, progressing from that Scandi bakery, we're moving much more into the kind of darker flavours of um, of Nordic baking, which I think is going to trend probably for quite a while now. Um, I was going to ask you, you know, how what what would you say is, is the best piece of advice you could give to someone who wants to get started as a as an NPD technologist or or start their career in NPD? What would you say to them? I would say sort of write it, send your email to companies uh, as many as you can sort of thing. Um, also sort of from these ABST conferences, when the people go down there, talk to them, make as much contact as you can, make as much noise as you can, make yourself stand out so they see you, um, they recognise you and they sort of picture you in the head. So if anything comes up, you're sort of the first person they'll think to, the first person they'll go to. But just sort of send an email out and say you're looking at doing some work experience or some internship. Um, can you come along for a few weeks? Um, nine out of ten, they'll, they'll, they'll answer you, but they'll either say no no, or yes. Most of them will say yes because they're going to sort of, um, it's creating sort of the future for the sort of future bakers. And uh, that's what we need right now. We need sort of the new future and the new sort of minds coming through um, and sort of changing sort of the world of baking for the good for the future. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, and I don't know if you heard earlier. So the ABST is launching with the CBA uh, a fund, a bursary that students can apply for uh, to cover expenses for things like unpaid internships and work experience. Because you know that's something that we've been told is I, I really want to go and do work experience, but I live in the south and everything that I need to do is in the north. You know, so where am I going to stay? What am I going to do? Um, but I, I totally would agree with that. You know, uh, I think a lot of the times in bakery especially I would say like 40% is who you know you know and, and uh, it's just making those connections and kind of trying to build a bit of a name for yourself and building a brand I suppose I don't know if you find the same you really have to build a, a brand and a specialty for yourself yeah definitely and I think sort of doing this sort of ABST and sort of um, getting, getting your sort of product out there um, so if you, that's the best place to show your sort of development skills and your sort of new product development skills especially in the competition so entering the ABST entering other competitions sort of like the tip tree world bread awards um, also the um, the national bakery awards as well and things like that everything like that it's sort of um, I was a runner-up last year at the rising star awards um i've also sort of applied for again this year so it's just sort of trying to push your name get your name heard and just sort of get get you get shout as much as you can basically you've just got to shout until you're heard and just keep getting heard and then once you're heard just keep shouting so you remain being heard and that's sort of the key too and that's what i'd say to for all the students uh to keep doing just keep shouting keep getting heard and keep making as many contacts within the baking industry as you possibly can yeah, I mean, you know, it's just such good advice, isn't it? And really, I think that's the main goal of, you know, also you've got your practical learning, but you need to be making every opportunity count at, at college or at university. So I just want to run through a couple of the questions. So uh, Dawn has put one, she's not really, it's not a question per se, but she said uh, she remembers you well as a student and she said it's great to see how your career has developed and she wanted to say well done. That's from Dawn Gemmel. Um, and then we've also got a question from Graham just says a lot of the members are doing a uh, FE programme, just a few of higher education. How much of the technical skills did you learn during your education do you use? So, you know, how much did you pick up in your education versus on the job learning? 
so it's quite sort of a quite good balance really um you sort of pick up a lot of sort of technical knowledge while you're at university and a lot of the modules and everything like that sort of running uh running with it sort of food production wise uh ingredient functionality quality con control and quality insurance and things like that so everything sort of gets there and everything sits in the mind and you do a lot of baking and everything like that but then you sort of you need that sort of experience then for in a work environment so you can actually sort of put your process what you learned into from university then you can sort of put, start putting into action and it sort of does fit in sort of 100 percent. so everything you learn at, uh, at university if you put into the real world and into the bakery sort of side of it then it does turn out and it runs well but you need both of them sides so you can see that it's running well sort of thing so once you do that then you sort of realize yeah sort of 100 percent university and sort of college was 100 percent the right choice for me and i'm sort of glad i went through it first and then i'm glad i went through to craft baking first and then on to sort of manufacturing so i could learn both sides of the sort of uh, industry yeah they definitely both have their merits don't they i think of it sometimes as you know what they say about your driving test you know you you pass your test and then you really start learning and I, I think it is similar to that but you know what the skills that you pick up at, in your education and in your training you really start to advance them once you're out in the industry but if you didn't have them to begin with once you get a job you you would struggle I think to kind of pick things up properly um my question of the day I don't know if you've been watching part one but my question of the day is we've all failed we've all messed up massively in bakery at one point what is your biggest bakery fail? Okay, so yeah, once again, so yeah, I did hear you ask the other, so I've prepared a little bit for it, but I have got a few. Um, but I think the, the main one that stands out whenever sort of I think about this, anything like this, was actually my first day at bakery college. So I was at Leicester College. Uh, was all in the bakery for the first time. Was walking around the bakery. The tutor, the lecturer, was sort of going through each bit of equipment, telling us about what it, what it does, what it is, and sort of giving us a little bit of a demonstration um we got to the bdm he was showing us the bdm how it works told us all we had to put the bdm plates on properly because how expensive they were and everything like that pulled me out of the crowd to sort of have a go put the bdm board on obviously i haven't put it on properly pulled it down and the bdm just cracked and shattered into sort of loads of different pieces uh after being told like how much they were worth and how much these boards were worth and everything like that so it was my first day as well but luckily they didn't shout at me too much but that just always sort of stands out as my sort of ultimate baking fail yeah well you know that's what you go to go to school for i suppose so that you can make the mistakes on someone else's dime <laughs> but uh anyway i'm gonna um move on to the next part of our webinar now but thank you so much will um if any of you want to get in contact with will uh, to kind of discuss any future opportunities or advice then please just uh, drop me a message and I'll see if we can put you in touch. Um, but, you know, thank you for supporting the AVS team for being here today, taking up your time. And uh, we really appreciate it. That was such a great insight into NPD as a career. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And hopefully to see you soon at one of the ABSTs. Bye.
Sorry guys, looks like we're having just a, a few little technical issues. Um, I'm just trying to invite our next speaker, Selassie, up to the stage. Selassie from Bake Off. Um, so uh, I'm just going to leave the logos up on the screen for a second and see if we can fix and figure out what's going on. Um, and I'll be back with you shortly.